So we had done the skeletal system. We were to start on articular system. Now this is in the spirit of talking about the musculoskeletal system. We agreed that when you talk about musculoskeletal system, we are referring to the locomotor super system, the systems that are involved in movement. And uh, within this locomotor super system, there are three systems that we are concerned about. Skeletal system that is concerned with bones and perhaps cartilage. Articular system concerned with joints and muscular system that is concerned with skeletal muscles as we are going to see. So in this lecture, let's look at the articular system. These are the things we are going to learn under this lecture. We are going to define what joints are and we are going to state their role. We are also going to see how we classify joints. And then we are going to give examples of the different three types of joints that we know, the fibrous joints, cartilaginous joints, and synovial joints. It's a pretty straightforward lecture. Let's begin by defining. By definition, a joint is a junction between two or more bones. Of course, now we are understanding this in the context of human anatomy, not just any other joint. So with regard to human anatomy, a joint is a junction between two or more bones. This could be either a primary joint, sorry, it can either be a simple joint or a compound joint. A simple joint will have just two bones uniting, as you can see in this particular image. There's a bone there, there's a bone there, so these are simple joints. A compound joint is where there are more than two bones, like in this case, this bone, that bone, that bone. So yes, a joint is a junction between two or more bones. You call it simple if there are two bones. You call it compound if it is more than two bones. So what is the role of joints? Two key things. Joints allow for movement. In as much as there is variation in the degree of movement of different joints, to some extent, all joints allow some degree of movement. The other key role of joints is to allow for growth. Usually, they are the sites which allow for expansion of bones. These are the two key functions of joints. How do we classify joints? There are three classes of joints. There are those that we call fibrous joints. We call them so if the two bones or whatever the bones are joined by fibrous connective tissue. Now, you remember we talked about connective tissues and we said there's a category called fibrous connective tissue or others called connective tissue proper or generalized connective tissue. So if the two or so bones are joined by fibrous connective tissue, we call it fibrous joint. If the two or so bones are joined by cartilage tissue, then we call it cartilaginous joint. Lastly, if the two or so bones are joined by a fluid filled cavity, then we call it synovial joints. Now understand that uh, in terms of degree of movement, these ones are the less mobile, are these ones are the most mobile. 
So these ones are in the middle somewhere. We are going to see <clears throat> the different types of joints. Let's start with fibrous joints. So the images here show you different categories of fibrous joints. The first ones are called sutures. Sutures are examples of fibrous joints. So what's a suture? We call a joint a suture if the two bones are separated by thin fibrous connective tissue, very thin fibrous connective tissue. So thin that you do not really actually see that fibrous connective tissue. It appears like the two bones are actually in contact with each other like these ones. So if the two bones are joined by very thin fibrous connective tissue, then you call it a suture. And such types of joints are present in the bones of the skull. So what are the examples of major sutures of the skull? we have what you call the coronal suture. That one separates the frontal bone from the parietal bones. We have the sagittal suture. This one separates the right and the left parietal bones. We have the lambdoid suture. This one separates occipital bone from the parietal bones. There's another suture I want you to add, but not visualize in this image. The square muscle suture from the word squamous. The square muscle suture separates the parietal bone from the temporal bone. So those four sutures are the major sutures of the skull, but they are not the only sutures of the skull. When we looked at the skeletal system, we noted that there are many bones in the skull. Those bones, most of them are actually joined by sutures. And so all those sutures have names, but these four I've given you are the big ones and perhaps the ones that are involving the calvaria. You remember the calvaria is the membranous neurocranium. Coronal, sagittal, lambdoid, and square muscle suture. The second type of fibrous joints are the ones we call syndesmosis. Now, what is syndesmosis? We call a joint syndesmosis if the two bones are joined by very thick ligaments, very thick ligament joining the two bones. Then we call that type of fibrous joint a syndesmosis. The best example of syndesmosis is the joint between the tibia and the talus, sorry, the tibia and the fibula. Now, tibia and fibula articulate on two points, proximally and distally. The distal tibiofibular joint is what we are talking about. The proximal one is not fibrous joint, but the distal one, this is tibia, this is fibula. The distal tibiofibular joint is what you're talking about. It's a syndesmosis. We actually commonly call it the distal lower extremity syndesmosis. 
distal lower extremity syndesmosis, the junction between the tibia and the fibula distally. It's an example of syndesmosis. A syndesmosis is where the two bones are joined by very strong ligament. The third category of fibrous joints are what we call gum forces. Now, what are gum forces? You call a joint gum forces if it is a joint between teeth and the jaw. No, you remember that uh, we have lower jaw, we have upper jaw, and that the teeth are strongly held to the jaw. So what, what usually hold the teeth to the jaw is actually a joint. There are strong ligaments that join teeth to the jaw. So this is what constitutes the gum forces. There's fibrous joints between teeth and jaw, gum forces. So those are the three types of fibrous joints. Now let's look at the cartilaginous joints. We have agreed that you call a joint cartilaginous if the two bones are joined by cartilage. There are two types of cartilaginous joints. We have a primary cartilaginous joint and you have a secondary cartilaginous joint. What is a primary cartilaginous joint? A primary cartilaginous joint, which is other is called synchondrosis, is a type of a joint where the two bones are simply separated by hyaline cartilage. So you have hyaline cartilage between the two bones. That becomes a primary cartilaginous joint, which is also called synchondrosis. A good example of fibrous, sorry, a good example of primary cartilaginous joints would be the joint between the sternum and the ribs. You want to call such a joint sternocostal joint, the joint between the sternum and the ribs, sternocostal joints. The term costal refers to ribs, of course, sternum is sternum. Synchondrosis allows some level of movement that the fibrous joints would not really accommodate. There is still some degree of movement in fibrous joints, by the way, but cartilaginous joints are more mobile compared to fibrous joints. And we are going to see synovial joints are even more mobile compared to cartilaginous joints. Now, even cartilaginous joints themselves, the primary cartilaginous joints are less mobile compared to the secondary cartilaginous joints. Secondary cartilaginous joints will be more mobile compared to the primary ones. Now let's talk about the secondary cartilaginous joints. You call a joint a secondary cartilaginous joint if this is the arrangement. You have two bones, yes. Each bone is lined by hyaline cartilage. That's okay. However, between those two hyaline cartilages that are lining the ends of each bone, you have fibrocartilage in between. So fibrocartilage separates the hyaline cartilages that line the bones. So if this is the arrangement, you call that secondary cartilaginous joint. The other name given to secondary cartilaginous joint is symphysis. This is how a symphysial joint looks like. And a good example for symphysis is a pubic symphysis. 
the joint between the right and the left pubic bone. Another good example of symphysia joints are the intervertebral discs, the joints between the vertebral bodies. Right, so these are cartilaginous joints. Now let's talk about synovial joints. When do you call a joint a synovial joint? You call a joint a synovial joint if there is a joint cavity. And that joint cavity is filled with fluid. That fluid is called synovial fluid. It is a fluid that reduces uh, friction. Because of that arrangement, synovial joints are the most mobile types of joints. We name synovial joints, again, according to the variety. Now, we classify them based on the configuration of the articulating bones. For example, in the first one, looks like there's something that looks like a ball and another one looks like a socket. So we call this variety the ball and socket variety. Examples of synovial ball and socket variety include the hip joint, which is shown here, but also include the shoulder joint. The shoulder joint is not here, but the shoulder joint is also an example of a synovial joint of ball and socket variety. The other variety of synovial joints is what we call synovial hinge. What is a hinge? A hinge is something that allows movement only in one axis. A good example of such a joint in the body is the elbow joint. The elbow joint allows movement only in one axis. So we call it a hinge joint. There are other varieties apart from the ones I've told you. So you can have what you call synovial planar. This is synovial planar. What a synovial planar? Planar from the word plane. Synovial planar is called so because the articulating surfaces are flat, plane. Good example of synovial planar joint is the proximal tibiofibular joint. Proximal tibiofibular joint. The articulating surfaces are flat. Another example of a synovial joint is what you call synovial cella, the one down here. Synovial cella. Cella is S E double L A R. You can call it cella or saddle. Saddle is S A double D L A. Cella joint or saddle joint. Now, you need to ask yourself why saddle. You know, um, the back of a horse where someone usually sits on is what we're calling saddle. What's the configuration of such a region? Transversely, the region would be convex, and then anterior posteriorly, the region would be concave. And that is how a cellar joint is. Transversely, it could be convex or concave, and then anterior posteriorly, it would be the opposite. Examples of such joints would be the joint between the patella and the femur. Let's call it patellofemoral joint. The patellofemoral joint is a synovial cellar joint or a synovial saddle joint. I'll add you one more, the pivotal joint. From the word pivot, pivotal joint. Synovial pivotal joint is where there is an axis of rotation. 
like a pivot. A good example is a proximal radio ulnar joint. Even the distal radio ulnar joint is still an example. So the proximal and distal radio ulnar joints are pivotal joints. So the message here is that there are different types of joints, fibrous joints, cartilaginous joints, synovial joints. For synovial joints, there are different varieties based on the configuration of the articulating surfaces. I've given you examples of these varieties of synovial joints, ball and socket, hinge, planar, saddle, and pivotal. Great. Any question on articular system? 